Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. I found these really pretty metallic pumpkins at Dollar Tree and they came in different colors and I thought they were really pretty. My first thought was to put alcohol inks on them and you could do that as well but it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted to so I'm going to show you how to gold leaf them and I think it just really adds elegance to them. Now you could put them on the little foam pumpkins if you couldn't find the metallic pumpkins and that's fine as well or if you wanted to paint them metallic you could use acrylic paints base coat them with um, a lighter color. Reds and yellows are really hard to base coat a nice coat with so kind of go down in color like a straw background for that and more of a lighter uh, copper color not a fire engine red that's a really hard color your greens are more simple and they're an easier one to do but I wanted them to be different layered and we're going to talk about that um, Dollar Tree does carry one size of the candle holders, but I like three different sizes. If you could not find the three different sizes, you can always stack stuff underneath them. I use like wood slices and you could put two, one, and then none. So you can do something like that. Or you can go to the thrift store, which was what I did, and find the three different sizes. So that's totally up to you. So we've got those working with us here. And the first thing we're going to do is put on our metal leaf adhesive and this is kind of a glue to put the metal leaf on and the first thing you want to do is shake it really really well and I use an old brush I don't like to use my new brushes because it kind of sticks in it and makes it yucky so and it can be uh, doesn't have to be a fancy brush on your pumpkins you don't want to go halfway it's more pleasing if you go a third of the way or two thirds of the way so kind of think about that and I don't want an even edge so and I'm going to kind of put this on of a pretty decent amount and we're going to make sure we kind of come down those little guys as well but see I don't want them straight across at all we're just bringing those down as they come and we're going to go all the way through this one and then we'll start on our candle holder also make sure you get up to that stem and if you didn't have a stem you would liked we're going to cover that up but uh, if you didn't want to cover it up, you could do that as well. So on the candle holder, I'm going to do the same thing. And I am not going to come up any further than that. But I want to make sure I get the sides right there on all of the edges. And then I'm just going to bring that up here and there. I want to bring it pretty high up. I don't want to leave it too low, but we don't, again we don't want to cover the whole thing you could bring it up different levels you could put it on different sides that you wanted to do just make it your own and have fun with it you want to wait until your metal leaf adhesive is all completely clear there's no little white spots all of those should be gone they're pretty well gone and they're also gone on our glass. It says it takes an hour. I don't think I've ever waited an hour. So that's totally up to you. Now on the uh, metal leafing today, um, 
the, we do carry the gold leafing and I've played a little bit with it with adding alcohol inks and hopefully I'll get that technique down and uh, do a video on it but right now I have a colored one and I purchased this one from bluewhalearts.com they have different colors they have some reds some blues some different things like that but they're really pretty and I, I, I like those a lot so um, they're he easy and hard to pe work with. So many people complain about how hard they are are to work with, and I don't think that they're that hard. And I think part of it is just taking your time, knowing that it's going to be sticky, and knowing how to just kind of pick it up lightly. I think you tr don't try to overdo it. So we're simply going to take these pieces. And we're going to start to put them onto our pumpkin on the areas that we put our glue. And you can see like right there, there's no glue, so that piece is coming down. And you, you could even keep this guy over here, and if you needed to put it onto a piece, you could put it onto him if you have extra pieces that were starting to come off. But you really want to push down on those and we're continuing all the way and you can do larger pieces there's some gold fo uh, foil that comes in pieces not sections like this and I don't care for that at all it is so much easier to do it this way as you can totally see and then I can go back later and just fill in the sections that I missed. I got a piece of glue on that finger there. Make sure you get really close up to your stem that that works really good there. And while you have flat edges as well, you may want to use the flat edges to go around the bottom of our candle stick, our candle holder. We see we've got a straight edge there, and if you just put that on the straight edge, then you've got that. And you don't have to worry about that as much, and that's easier to do kind of like that. If you have any breaks, just take a little spot and go back in and fill all of those up. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep working all the way around. And if I have areas that still have glue on them, like here, I'm going to go back. Now where I have double layers, see that will come, come off and you can use that on another section. And I'm just going to keep applying it till I've got it on both of my pieces. Once you've got that covered, you want to come in and rub it really well, especially in your creases. Make sure that you've got that on really nice and good. And then what I do is I take a brush after that and just remove any loose pieces that may have still be on. You don't want to do it too hard. You don't want to scratch it. You just want to kind of leave it there, but get any of the loose pieces off that we might have on it, or rub them off as well. Then once you get all that done, we're going to varnish our pumpkin, and I'm just going to varnish the bottom part of my candle holder and you could do it with a uh, brush on that would be fine but I'm just going for convenience I'm just going to use some Krylon I'm going to use gloss because we're working with a very shiny surface and um, spray it in a well ventilated area and I just spray like I said just that area and I do all of my pumpkins and put uh, at least a couple coats on let that dry and we'll start decorating it now that our varnish is dried we're going to go ahead and do our stem and I'm going to be using some paper twist and I find my paper twist in my thrift stores it was kind of an older 
item that we used a lot in the 80s, but Hobby Lobby still carries it. You also could use paper core if you are a basket weaver. And I like to pull it apart. And what I usually do is kind of cut it so I can kind of have two stem pieces kind of come out so I don't have one thick heavy stem and I really like the look of that instead. And we're going to hot glue that onto there and then we're going to start twisting it a little bit more here. Okay this guy down just a little bit more okay so we're gonna hot glue it over the middle of our stem and this is one of those times that you can have your glue gun set on low temp it's better you don't burn yourself as much 80% of the time that I have it on high temp I probably could have it on low temp and not get burned so that's something to think about so once we get this kind of going here, we're just going to start twisting this out. And it helps if you maybe dabbed your finger in a little bit of water as well. That would help twist that and keep that twisted just a little bit better for you. But I love the twisted viney look of the pumpkins because that's how they really do grow. We just happen to cut them off so short. And you could even take that down lower if you wanted to go lower if you like that look better. Just make it your own. And a lot of times I'll put some gold glitter or on this one maybe even some cop glitter over the lid over the stem so okay I'm going to use two different leaves and I want them two different colors if you have a big and a little one that's nice too and I want you to kind of think about where your stem is and where your leaves are going to sit with that so kind of decide which direction you like that and I am just gluing it on at the base of this I don't want it to hang over too much if you wanted to hang it over that's fine and then my next one I wanted to even set up higher so I'm going to see if I can get it to kind of even set up a little bit higher here and just kind of have it setting like that so we get that dimensional look in there and it's not flat and I have them off centered just a little bit. Now this happens to be raffia and you can do hair ribbons like this too. And what you do is you take your uh, raffia or ribbon and you curl it around a dowel and probably about a 5 8 inch dowel is a good size this one's gone up and down and I wet mine down and then put it in the oven some people don't do that but you want to put it in like about 200 degrees for about 20 or 30 minutes just really keep an eye on it make sure you don't overdo it because this this is um, raffia not your ribbons and it would be more inflammable. So now that we have that curled and you take it off, I even break it into smaller pieces and divide this two or three times here and then you're going to really get that fall real fun feel of all the vines and twigs that you have on your pumpkins and they look more natural and isn't that neat? And you can decide how many of these you want to put on. Um, I like to have like one longer one coming down one side or something like that. But even just right there, that looks really good. You can leave it alone or if you want to kind of tack it, tack it in the back where they're all three kind of sitting there. Just a tiny amount of glue so that that part doesn't come undone and then you have all of your little swirls coming around everywhere 
I might have to go back and put a, another little one on this other side. They're kind of wiggling on me. But I think less is probably a little bit better than more. So, so kind of think about that as well. We don't want to overdo it. And then I'm simply just going to take a little piece of berry garland here. Not much. And just enough to pop the color. I'm going to twist it just a tad. And I'm going to stick it on this side out in the front so that I have one berry here and two leaves in the back to kind of set that off to three. And see if I can get my graph out of the way there for a second while I glue that on. And then you can simply just play with it till you have it like you want it. And the last thing we're going to do here, isn't that simple and beautiful, elegant, easy? We're going to use some E6000. I'm going to do two different things here. I'm going to use the E6000 for long term because we're gluing to glass. But I'm also going to use my hot glue gun for short term to keep it in clay place until our E6000 dries. So I did the glue in the middle. And I'm going to do the hot glue on the outside. You don't even have to do it all the way around. You could do two or three uh, little spots and everything. And we want to make sure that we kind of get that in the middle. And make sure that it is sitting even. And you can kind of turn it and look at it. And if you need to adjust it, you need to adjust it right away. But that should be pretty good. Another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could tie a raffia bow around, but I like the elegance of them, I think, without the raffia bow because I think that would take away from our uh, uh, copper leafing down here. But isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm.